Well, thanks, Ding Dong. Um, so I'm Jean Lu. I'm a scientist at NCBI, and uh, um, my group does text mining uh, research mainly. Um, so a, brief, a quick introduction. Our, we currently have three focus areas. Uh, one is how do we uh, really in the effort to improve the uh, literature search in PubMed and PubMed Central. So actually in a few weeks, uh, at the end of this month, you'll probably see that we are, we are actually having a new um, algorithm for relevant sorting in PubMed. Um, certainly something that uh, the, the, the keynote speakers today mentioned, all three keynotes mentioned today, something could be very relevant for improving uh, literature search. And second project uh, main efforts in our group is doing the entity recognition. So uh, you will see some of the uh, tools like we're building like Puppet and others. And the last um, effort is we do is um, is actually I'm, I'm involved in the um, biocreative uh, organization. That's the topic of this particular presentation. So. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with BioCreative, it is one of the um, assessment events for assessing the state of art in text mining research. And there are many um, um, such a assessment events these days, uh, but BioCreative is probably one of the uh, longest running uh, events um, back to 2004. And this is really a, a community-wide effort because as you can see that um, there are a lot of people around um, uh, from different parts of the world um, involved in the organization. And if you're interested, um, a few, two years ago, uh, a previous member of my group actually wrote about a, um, a review about all the text mining um, assessment, including the BioMP share task that Jin Zhong and including the BioASQ that uh, previously prevented in, uh, during this meeting. So what's new for this year is that uh, at least NCBI is organizing a new task uh, related to precision medicine. As you know that this is a uh, trans NIH effort. And the key of that is that we can try to, uh, given the uh, that DNA sequencing, genomic sequencing has become more and more available and cheaper to do, can we leverage that and to try to predict um, and treat the human diseases by taking into account the genetic variants uh, of genetic profiles of individuals? And right now, I don't think we're there, but that's at least the NIH goal, and we're trying to do get to there. At the, but before we get to there, we have to know sort of the, what's the function of genetic variants and how what is the uh, pathogenics of uh, individual um, variant. And this is mainly a like I say, an NIH or NHGRI effort, but suddenly this uh, becomes also important uh, from the National Library of Medicine point of view that uh, our uh, new and the current director, uh, Dr. Brandon, when she uh, swore in the office as the new director of IIM, uh, she published an editorial and she suddenly thinks that uh, uh, PMI is an important effort to, uh, to work on. Now, um, NCBI has uh, history of uh, maintaining the genetic information uh, databases for genetic information. We have a bunch of different uh, resources that you may uh, may not know, but um, these are all related to uh, genetic uh, resources, and some of them are actually a lot of them have a uh, text information. But uh, regardless of that, and even there, are, even if you look at the broader community, there's also many other um, databases about genetic variants. But all of these have a main bottleneck that is requires human curation that we already talked about uh, during this meeting that you know for example PubMed increases by a million papers each uh, year and that uh, is if you compute that that's a two journal articles every second uh, minute and we already I already talked about three minutes so there are already uh, six papers and some of them may be related to uh, human genetic variants and the why gen human genetic variants is important because genomic variants can alter the uh, human protein interactions that they can disrupt or they can do some uh, increase or <laughs> decrease the interaction strength and by doing that they will actually disrupt or uh, change the function of a particular protein and which can cause or related to diseases so um, I don't mean to I don't mean to have you to read this paper but in this paper in this abstract there is a uh, sentence that clearly shows that the uh, mutation or uh, variant um, protein in protein that in, uh, changes the uh, interaction of two partic particular proteins, SRC and uh, RPTP alpha. So this, so for this, for the 
Right for the task that we are organizing, we are particularly trying to do uh, two things. One is that we're trying to having people to find papers that are uh, related, that are mentioning these type of events. And more, a deeper level is we want to have systems to extract the relationship describing the efforts, describing the effect of mutations affecting protein interactions. So let me talk a little bit more detail about these two uh, tasks. So for the first document triage task, where essentially we're giving uh, teams about 1,000 papers, abstracts. We're not ready to move into the uh, full text yet. So these abstracts will de describe the mutations and they will be manually annotated um, by the uh, database curators whether they're relevant to uh, precision medicine or not. And then the systems will be required to return, given a new list of a new set of documents to rank them uh, based on the confidence score, whether they are relevant or not. And then, given the subset of these relevant documents we have, we'll be able to provide, maybe in a few hundreds of them, that we can provide actual the entities involved in the interactions or in the relationships. So, for example, in the sample document that I showed you, we could have the mutations, or we can give you the exact mutations, or we can also give you the interaction to proteins. And also, um, in many cases, um, may not be the absolute every case, but in many cases, these proteins or the mutations can be normalized. Uh, proteins can be normalized to source part or entry gene ID, and then mutations can be uh, mapped to um, DB SNP RS numbers. And because this particular task is about uh, relation extraction, so we are sort of skipping the NER, unnamed entity, concept recognition step. So, so we're not going to evaluate seeing, um, teams um, uh, and your uh, performance, but we are going to evaluate on the relation extraction so far. So therefore, we will provide a uh, pre-computed annotations uh, for many entities involved, getting involved. Of course, um, these are not 100% accurate because these are computed uh, by automatic method, and but teams can feel free to use any of their own methods to do that. So, given the two tasks, it's actually quite familiar the, that um, to evaluate the different system uh, submissions, you can use in the validity of the methods, you can use in precision recall and F measure, so that's quite standard. And if for the first document triage task, you can also use an average precision to compare rankings. But ultimately, the reason we want to propose this task is we want to see if there's a um, utility of such kind of text mining systems. And that's why we propose that we can actually have a sort of post, post hoc um, uh, pooling to having a, of maybe all the system, maybe a top a few best systems, and then having the database uh, curators to look at the results to see whether or not these things were actually helping them. Now, this is a, a tentative uh, timeline. So now we're in January. Uh, in the spring, we'll release training data, and in the summer, we'll have the test set. And, but most important is that we are we're uh, firm on the workshop date, which is in October. And this task will, is a joint effort with NCBI and the Biograde. And really, the uh, the two people uh, that are voted, the top two are the uh, main drivers of this particular task. The reason that we work together with Biograde is because we had worked with them previously uh, in the last Biocreative, and that was focusing purely on the protein-protein interaction uh, without the any um, any, um, but this time we're actually adding something new to the task because we also have some preliminary study working on the uh, uh, extracting mutations and text mining mutation relationship with a genotype and phenotype. So we think this will uh, attract, the, um, will draw the uh, participation uh, a lot because we also believe that we are proposing some task that is actually not unfamiliar with many of the uh, participants because protein-protein uh, interaction has been done many, many times um, in the biocreative and and also there are a lot of text mining tools for extraction mutations and also there's your uh, work on mutation related uh, information extraction. Um, so my favorite work will be the EMU where um, actually Olivia is involved uh, doing that. So I hope that by introducing this task you will be find interesting. This is, like I said, many details are still not finalized, but at least you're interested to think about keeping this in mind there's this new task. But you may not be, and that's fine,
but we also lined up four other tasks in the BioQuip this year that hopefully you'll find some others that will be interesting uh, to you. And I'm not going to, all these will be available, uh, information will be available in the BioQuip website very soon. So, uh, given the time, thank you for your attention, but I hope that um, uh, mark up the dates of the BioCreative and it will be in Washington DC this year and uh, you know, feel free to uh, uh, stop by maybe NCBI or NLM while you're there. Okay, thank you.